We don't have an actual brooder here at the farm, and so in today's video, what I'm going to do is build a brooder for all the ducklings that we have showing up here. In less than one week, we're going to have 40 ducklings and six goslings show up here at the farm. As I've talked to you guys in the past, we have this grand scheme of raising ducks for eggs out in our permaculture orchard. Um, I did a whole video on it, be sure to check that out, it'll give you some context for some of the things I'm trying to do here today. But what's happening is these ducklings, I ordered them online, and they are showing up uh, at the post office in, a, in, like I said, about a week, and I gotta go pick them up and bring them home to the farm. Ducks as far as animals go, are very cold hardy, which is important for us here in Vermont. But little ducklings, when they're just those cute little balls of fluff and they don't have their true feathers, they struggle a lot in trying to maintain their own temperature. So what you often need to do is build something known as a brooder. A brooder is just like a little box or a contained area for uh, the ducklings. To, it's where you raise them, you feed them, you give them water, and you often have some heating lamps that, that are used to keep them warm. You know, picture like the, the mother hen or the mother duck sitting on the little chicks or ducklings. Uh, we're trying to create the same kind of effect. Quack. So I figured the best place to keep the ducklings would be to take them into this old milk cooler that we have. As I showed you guys in the video where I made the tour of the barn, the milking parlor is actually upstairs. And this little area here was the actual cooler. See that? Pretty cool, right? You can even see the old refrigerator equipment down here too. I need to clean this room up because this is gonna be the space where I can build the brooder. Always wear gloves when you're dealing with old barn construction stuff. One time I got jabbed with a nasty rusty nail and spent like a whole 24 hours worried that I caught tetanus. Don't tell Allison that story, she'll be really mad. Look at that. I believe in parlance of olden days, this is what was called a ten penny nail. In terms of the design from the aerial, I want to have this be five feet and this be about five feet. You know, probably somewhere like here, I'm going to have like a crossbar. From a side profile perspective, let's give it a shot and drawing it out. And then I'm going to have another little bar that runs across, and this is where my heat lamps go. I'll do one on each side. And what's nice about this is I can raise and lower it. Rather than going to Home Depot or Lowe's, I'm going to take advantage of the lumber yard that we have here at the farm. It's pretty extensive. So most of this wood was left over from when we did the renovations on our house. I've been keeping it in the barn for an occasion just like this. very much practicing good enough carpentry on this project. As recently as 24 months ago, I'd never even operated a circular saw. I used to be the least handy person in the world, and I'm still not all that handy, but I've been able to start doing things on my own. With just a little bit of self-confidence and an urgency to get some stuff done, it's amazing what you can actually tackle. All right. 
Alrighty. This thing is looking pretty good. Now it's time to start building the light stand that's going to go in the middle. The reason I'm putting the light stand in the middle is because if you put the light and the heat in the corner, you run the risk of having your ducklings crowd all into one corner and crush each other. week goes by, I'm going to raise it up higher and higher. The reason you do this is because you want to get the ducklings used to uh, being in a slightly colder temperature. So by raising the lights up, you start to harden them off because you make the temperature in the brooder get cooler and cooler. It just dawned on me, if I'm going to get a light like this for heat, I'm going to need to run some power out to here. Do. I got this nifty thermostat box so that I can keep the brooder at a constant temperature. This will prevent me from over or underheating the ducts. For bedding, I'm going to be using pine shavings. This is the fun part. Now got a brooder set up, ready for our 40 ducklings, and did I mention that we're getting six goslings? So now it's actually time for me to go feed Pablo. He's getting pretty hungry, which uh, reminds me, I've got to figure out a way to Pablo-proof this door and Pablo-proof those windows. That would be an ugly scene if he got in here. I am super excited about the ducks coming here. Uh, I hope you guys are too. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of these videos. I'm going to start cranking out more and more of them, especially once we have the baby little ducklings. And uh, hope you guys keep watching. Thanks.